All right, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are doing well. I really do hope that. Welcome back to another Chelsea news video. Not so much talking about transfers today. More general Chelsea news, which is interesting. And some positive stuff in there as well. As well as some enlightening stuff, I guess. But more importantly, positive stuff. Today I'm going to be citing a lot of information from Frank Lampard's press conference and I'm going to give you my opinion on some of the stuff he said, as well as talking about the re-emergence, the beautiful sight of Ruben Loftus-Cheek back in first team training and a reminder to you guys how important this guy and how effective this guy can be to Chelsea moving forwards. And maybe a couple of words on Kepa and how Frank Lampard's viewing the whole goalkeeper situation. But before we do get into today's video, please do sub to the channel if you haven't yet done so click the bell notifications icon why not like the video all right let's get into it so some of the information i'll be citing today was from frank lampard's pre-match presser to the fa cup game tomorrow uh, away at hull uh, i don't want to talk too much about the game because the game itself is pretty self-explanatory it's the next round in the fa cup frank lampard will rotate quite a lot Hopefully we'll see the likes of Billy Gilmore, maybe Tino Andrian. Uh, Terry Glampty at right back would be superb, especially while Rhys James is resting that injury. And up front it's going to be Michy Batshuayi, Caballero in goal, etc. So I'll probably do a video after the game regarding that. But there's not much to say in the meantime apart from it's a lower league opposition. Chelsea need to rotate the side and essentially just go and get the work done. Hopefully nothing backfires. So anyway, Lampard was asked about a bunch of stuff in this press conference. He was asked about Kepa, Aretha Balaga and his recent poor form. The Chelsea coach kind of like backed him. He was like, look, as a professional footballer, you need to block out all this external noise. He didn't go into, yes, the stats are awful and it's hard to block out that noise when it's the truth. But he kind of admitted, essentially in not so many words, that yes, he's aware Kepa has been making poor mistakes. But in basically saying, look, he's got to get back to basics. He's the sort of Chelsea goalkeeper for the moment. And although he admitted Willy Caballero will definitely be playing tomorrow, in regards to Kepa, I think he's just like, look, he's a professional footballer. He needs to block everything out, get back to basics and build from there. And even if he's saying all this and means all this Frank Lampard, Frank might still be thinking, I want to get rid of him anyway. I mean, this is kind of stuff you just say, right? So of course, Frank Lampard was actually questioned on a few things regarding transfers, and it's worth telling you guys while we're here. He obviously reinstated the same sort of stance about Olivier Giroud. Yes, there's been talk with clubs. Yes, you know, the player is probably interested in going, but he'll only go once everything's sorted and the deal suits Chelsea Football Club. And when that happens, I will tell you. Interestingly as well, Frank Lampard was directly asked about the uh, Liga and midfielder Bukare Samari and said, is this a player you're interested in? And he basically kind of said, you know what? Yeah, we played against him. He's a very good footballer. I am sort of, he sort of said, I'm interested in him without saying I'm interested in him. Basically said, not this window. He said, this January, we're not going in for him. He's kind of reiterating that the only thing this January that Chelsea want to go or look for or potentially get is a striker. Lamps actually went on throughout this press conference. He kept recurring, coming back to the striker situation. He talked about the last couple of games, Chelsea created 20 chances apiece and they were not converting. You can tell the Chelsea coach is fuming at the conversion situation or at least the chance conversion situation in the Chelsea first team at the moment. It is dismal. He keeps sort of throwing up these stats about look at what we're creating and look at what we're not getting out of it. Dude, this is a personnel situation. Man wants a striker like nothing. So he was asked about that as well. They said, Frank, you know, is there options in January? January's a hard time to like sign a player. Is it possible? He did admit, yes, it's more difficult, but there have been good signings in January. You can tell he absolutely wants signings because he didn't want to like sell the January window as a negative, difficult slash impossible window to buy players. He was like, no, you can have successful players in January. And he said, interestingly, there are options. So perhaps it isn't just Moose's Dembele, the heavily linked Lyon centre forward to Chelsea. Perhaps in the back of Frank's head, he knows what's going on in terms of negotiations. And if he's coming out and saying, look, we've got options, we've got striker options to sign this January. Maybe Chelsea are just doing the Chelsea thing. <laughs> it's a Chelsea thing in terms of waiting till the window gets nearly shut and maybe even doing a deal on deadline day because that's classic Chelsea football club. To be honest, often Chelsea are really, really good at keeping signings on the wraps until they're like in Cobham. Um, obviously, 
stories come out before things happen like Higuain and other players because agents want to get the story out or they get cited and there could be truth to that so Chelsea could may well for example end up signing Moussa Dembele the links were there for weeks now we know about it and it may well happen but there might be players behind the scenes that the media just don't know about Frank knows about that they might sign there could be a striker that's nearly signed so that's what I thought was really interesting the way he was like yeah we got options we're looking at options there are options options right but let's talk about the really really important thing in this video Ruben Loftus-Cheek now <laughs> we all know he's a Chelsea player and what he brings but he is going to be so so important people are talking about how difficult Chelsea's season is the recurring theme the recurring problems but to be honest these last few games with said recurring themes and recurring problems were only highlighted more so because of the absence of say Christian Pulisic and Reese James the last couple of games Chelsea suffered massively against Arsenal and indeed against Newcastle when he came off without Reese James he's a hugely effective and positive player for this Chelsea starting 11 as is often Christian Pulisic in terms of him offering something slightly different in his forward play. But above all, above everyone, the most effective miss is Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He's been out for seven months plus or something, so people can easily forget and be forgiven for forgetting what Ruben Loftus-Cheek actually brings to Chelsea in terms of positive dynamic. Firstly, he brings strength, a direct play and pace and can absolutely bulldoze a midfield. Not only can he carry the ball and just drive through people, he's got a deft touch, he can delicate, he's technical, he can like do one touch layoffs, he can spin, he can hold up the ball because he's an absolute tank. So he can hold up the ball, he can move incredibly fast, yet he's technical and he can dribble. He can curl a ball into the top corner, he can score scrappy goals. Right, last season, yeah, I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. Paul Pogba had like his standout, shining light Manchester United season under Solskjaer when he was reborn when Solskjaer first came into Manchester United. Ruben Loftus-Cheek scored the same amount of goals as Paul Pogba from open play, six, which was six, but in a quarter of the time. Now they play in similar positions, they're both midfielders. You could argue uh, often Paul Pogba was actually playing in the number 10 in a 4-2-3-1 where Ruben Loftus-Cheek was playing left centre mid so really he was even further back than Paul Pogba but he scored the same amount of goals from open play in a, like I said a quarter of the time in very limited minutes when he occupies that left centre mid part of the park he can absolutely do serious serious damage so in these games where Chelsea were struggling He's a goal threat, he can score from long range, he can curl it into the top corner from 30 odd yards out so when you can't get through these low blocks that Chelsea struggle so badly to get through there's that option, there's the long range drive but also he can combine, he can go wide, he can bulldoze he can hold the ball up like in a second striker honestly he's such an offensive option and brings so much to the team that it's easy to forget it's, it's not like hyperbole when I say he was our second most and pretty close to the first most important player last season, obviously behind Eden Hazard. But in certain games where Chelsea couldn't win, when Ruben emerged into the team, he was the difference maker in many ways and not necessarily Eden Hazard. So it can't be understated how important it is for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. But also, I know I've just been waxing lyrical about the young Englishman, but wait, wait. No matter how much I believe all this about him, He's just come off an Achilles injury. A much worse one, apparently, than Callum hudson Adoy. Callum hudson Adoy didn't immediately explode back into the team. Obviously, he's looked pokey and bright recently, finding a bit of form, but that's only just. Now, Ruben Loftus-Cheek is training with the Chelsea first team again. He was pictured as looking good. He's been playing, well, he's been training with the under-16s, the under-18s, the under-21s, playing a few matches. Now he's training with the first team, he's getting back in the collective psychology of the group, he knows he's learning what Frank Lampard wants. But it's gonna take time, and we again, like we weren't sure of Callum Hudson-Odoi, is he going to be the same player as he was before? I think the most important thing to note here with Ruben Loftus-Cheek is it's going to require a lot of patience with the player because we know what's in his locker, we know what's in his natural talented ability, but how is he going to summon that player up immediately or can he summon that player up immediately again? I'm not so sure, we'll have to see. I, as a massive Chelsea fan and a huge fan of Ruben Loftus-Cheek, am incredibly excited to see him in this Frank Lampard team and I think Frank Lampard 
knows how important he could be to this Chelsea side when they're struggling to break down teams. In fact, Lampard's come out this season often talking about Ruben the same way he talked about Rhys James before he came into the team, how he's going to be a massive player for us. He's going to be really important to us and he genuinely will be in my opinion provided he gets over the injury entirely regains his confidence it's going to be like a new signing and it's something to be incredibly excited about come the end of the season hopefully chelsea sign another striker reese james is fully fit back in the side starting all the time Ruben Loftus Cheek, hopefully as well, as well as Christian Pulisic. Chelsea will have a good starting eleven, and they have then a different dynamic to start breaking teams down. They've got Ruben in the midfield driving, offering Chelsea something different. And of course, you've got Reese James with the service coming from the right hand side, cutting up, cutting in from the um, well, making inverted runs and also cutting back from the byline. Just different options that Chelsea so drastically need moving forwards. Anyway, what do you guys think? I'm really interested to hear if all you if you share the opinions of me about Ruben Loftus Cheek. Do you think he will be really positively, or he'll have such a positive effect on the team? I think he will. What do you think about the situation with Kepa? Let me know all that. And also, why not give me your school predictions for the FA Cup game against Hull City tomorrow? I'll be really interested in hearing that as well. If you've enjoyed the content today, guys, why not like the video? That means a lot. Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you are indeed new. Why not follow me on social media as well, at Football Yannick. That's at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Well, that's it for me, guys. You lot enjoy the football. Swing by Football Therapy every day, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby